This is Introduction to Focus, FinOps Costs and You Should Spec with Mike and Udom. Give them a warm round of applause. Thank you, everybody. My name is Udom. You've probably heard from me a little bit ago, so I'll keep it brief. Uh, I've been around the space for a little while, been at the different phases of this cloud cost management uh, practitioner life and now at the foundation. So really excited to be here today and, and talk to you all about Focus. Uh, yeah, my name's Mike. I uh, came from a practitioner role at Atlassian for 10 and a half years. And some of my team are in the audience, so they can tell you all about me uh, later. Uh, but um, you've recently joined the Phoenix Foundation as a CTO. I did write a book about some topic that we're all sort of related and interested in. And so um, definitely keen to uh, meet every one of you as I can across the next day and a half. But uh, obviously, first up, focus. Uh, seems like there's a little bit of interest in it, so that's a good start. Um, so uh, I guess at my role in Atlassian, uh, the team that I collaborated with uh, over the last few years, definitely, um, we, we experienced this pain where we had uh, the cloud billing files coming in, trying to normalize it for good, efficient reporting across the business. So I guess the, the point is, is that I know what the problem is uh, being there on, on the trenches. And um, you know, we, we built curated data sets ourselves. The great thing about that is, is you solve the problem for yourself. The problem with that, though, is, is they're very custom to you. And um, trying to bring people into the team means that you're not just training them about cloud data, but you're tra training them about your specific cloud data. There's no place out there that tells a, a new newcomer into the org that this is how we do cloud data because it's custom to your organization. And that's so common across the industry where we see the runners have built their own custom versions of the files, which means there's zero portability as your skill set because you can't go somewhere else that has the same billing file that you have. Um, and so definitely felt that this is a problem we should be solving at the foundation. Yeah, big plus one for that. Um, at City, we had a platform that spanned cloud, multiple cloud providers, multiple SaaS providers, internal costs, licensing costs. At the end of the day, the consumers of our platform needed one single view of costs. They needed a single way to do charge, uh, be charged back. They needed a single way to do budgeting and forecasting, et cetera. So what did I do? I came up with a taxonomy for a city, just like what Mike said, right? And then the more we got to talking, listen to the intuits of the world and, and apples and others, they're all doing the same thing. So it really made sense for us to come together here and, and do it through the foundation and give kind of a blueprint for the providers to center around and, and, and adopt and, and provide the value to all the practitioners. So of course, billing files are like super visual and then really demonstrates what things are doing. And, um, and but really reality is we, we try to build this image to sort of try and demonstrate what the, how this feels. I guess you have all these different flows of data coming in and you end up with just these reports that don't really align with each other. The, the data in one is kind of not quite the same as the other. And this gets really, really uh, hard when you have multi-cloud, like different pr cloud providers. And then it gets almost impossible when you add in things like SaaS providers and you then have licensing on top of that. And so the point is, is that you might be at a point where you're thinking that this is not that painful for you today. But you know, in my team at Atlassian, we'd always used to say that we're only one M&A away from multi-cloud, right? So something's gonna happen and you're gonna have that. And so uh, I would be surprised if any of you don't stick your hand up saying that you have some SaaS provider that goes along your cloud mix today. And where this gets beneficial is as we continue to sort of increase the scope of focus to grab more and more of the IT spend and just put it into one scheme room. That's not to say that we're taking the whole stack and, and handling all of the, the processes that go on top of that, but we're just trying to make it so that the data is at least consistent and uniform. Cool. So just a quick look at where we are today. Focus is formed as a separate project, a technical project under the Linux Foundation. We did that to ensure that it can remain free and open for everybody to use, whether it's the providers that are, uh, essentially converting their data into the, the focus specification or the consumers that are trying to get value out of the data. We want this to be free and open. So that's why it's 
it's a separate project and, and we'll go into a little bit of what that means in terms of contributing to this. Uh, the 0 0.5, as I uh, announced at the, at the keynote, is available now. It's going through a 30-day window where we've given the contributors uh, and, and the corporations or organizations that have contributed a chance to make essential claims, any IP, uh, IPR claims for uh, this work. That will be done and ready in July 26th will be when the 20, uh, 30 days will be over. So that'll be uh, the time when it's officially released and the license will apply. And we also have the focus data validator. We believe the validator will be a key part so that uh, providers will be able to easily check, is our data that we're producing meeting the focus specification? Same way there may be other use cases other than the providers where you might use this as well. And so as an entity of the Linux Foundation, we want to do everything open. Um, and uh, of course, we want to also do it as community-driven. And in order to do that, we need to get contributions from corporations. And we don't want those contributions to be to some sort of patent claim after the fact. So the CLA process is, is, is necessary for the process to make sure that any contributions are, <coughs> are given in a way that means that we end up with a royalty-free license so that the spec at the end of the day is then not coming tied with potential. Yeah, um, destination is the cloud native uh, billing data sets. We, that's where we want to get to, but in between is going to be uh, some of this open source things that we're investing in that that's going to help enable and drive some of the adoption. We are right now trying to work out what should go into the 1.0 spec and get that finalized. Uh, the working group will start working on 1.0 probably in the, uh, starting in about two weeks from now. Uh, so, it, you know, there's a chance for, for anybody that's interested to really get involved, help drive what this is going to look like. We know at a high level we want to add support for SaaS and, and on-premise and, and some of these kind of things, but a lot of you have expertise. You've been in the trenches, you've built some of the reporting, and you know what the insights you want to gain out of the data is. We want to incorporate that in and make sure that the specification is always going to be something that you can rely on to answer the questions that you have. Yeah, so if you go get the 0.5 release that's there today, focus.finops.org, uh, you will see the document that uh, is forming out of this. Uh, basically, you will see a specification document that has both uh, normative text and, and non-normative text. The normative text is the musts and requires, so it, it defines which dimensions need to be in the data and the requirements around that. And then the non-normative text gives you all of these sort of examples and details, like extra. Um, and so, so far, I think Udom had the right number of dimensions this morning. 25, yes. 25 dimensions. <laughs> so, um, sort of things that we're looking at is the origination of the data so you can identify, because once we pour all this data into one space, you need to be able to filter out which provider, what did it come from. Um, the resource and grouping information, we all love granular data. We don't want to lose that through the process of coming up with a schema. Um, service usage categorization information, so we're going to you'll find some dimensions become normative. So the values in those uh, dimensions are actually defined lists. So you can lean on the fact that it will be one of these set of values and then there'll be non-normative dimensions as well where your cloud providers and SaaS providers will be able to fill it with their own details. And so we're gonna have a combination of those. So you're able to figure out like, this is a compute type service and then the non-normalized -norm -norm would tell you that it's a EC2 or whatever. Um, what happened. Um, charge and billing periods, the, you know, none of this is going to be revolutionary and new. So you, some of the dimensions that you're quite familiar with within your billing data is going to be there and should operate pretty much the same as what you're already seeing. We're not trying to make something that's brand new and new, like hard to then add to your mix of way things work. But, um, and then when we get to the metric side of things, we're trying to get to a point where the metrics make sense and we don't have worlds where there's different measurements that mean different things that are very unique to the cloud provider. We want one set of metrics. So the difference between build um, cost, which is what you're getting on your invoice each month, versus net amortized, which is bringing in those prepayments and doing the matching for you. Yeah, and, and the set of attributes as well that help you, the consumers of the data, consume it in a very consistent way. You can always count on the fact that the column names are named in a certain way. 
empty values and null handling is handled in a certain way, dates and times and currencies, and this is just a starting point for 0 0.5. But as we add more and more things, what we're really do doing is just making sure the practitioner, when you're looking at the data set, it really doesn't matter where this came from. Did it come from Azure? Did it come from Snowflake? Did it come from internal cloud? You have a set of things that are core to FinOps that you can count on in these data sets. So like, double, you know, again, plus one on Mike saying, some of this is not gonna be revolutionary, but knowing that whether it's a project or subscription or a member account, that you can go to sub account ID and sub account name means you've now, you know, reduced the complexity of what you're trying to get out of the data, right? So that's, that's really what we're uh, aiming to do. Cool, yeah, uh, just a little bit about adoption. Uh, there's three main kind of uh, groups here that, that we're uh, bringing together. The cloud and the SaaS pro, uh, platforms, it's really to drive uh, you know, normalization and, and standardization in the way the data is produced. And uh, I don't know if the, the <laughs> one of the people that just came to the booth earlier, they came to us and said, we're gonna drive all of our providers, cloud and SaaS, to only give us data in focus format. Like, it, <laughs> there is definitely a lot of interest in, uh, in these folks getting, uh, providing clear billing data, so make sure you, you, uh, you know, knock on their door and let them know about, <laughs> about your interests. And then for the tooling vendors in the middle, you've got, um, you know, we see them uh, adding the ability to ingest that new data that would be generated by those uh, cloud providers. Um, they then got to transform the data that they are getting, whether it's coming in as focus or not, into the right dimension name so it's consistent between a focus data set and what's reported in their tooling. And then the potential for them once they uh, can ingest focus data is then for the customer itself to actually feed you focus data which then helps them serve those elements that are either not yet covered by certain providers giving them focused data, but also on-prem and uh, private license uh, agreements where they can actually feed the data back to the vendor in order to reach it. And most importantly, the practitioners. Um, initially, you all should get involved in building the, the specification and adopting it within your organization. Sometime, some, some part of this is gonna require you to do the manual transformation. You can also lean in on, on the open source projects that we're kicking off to convert the major cloud providers, data sets, and, and you'll see more. The, the, there's lots of other providers in the space that if you're passionate about that, we'd love, love for you to get involved in, uh, in doing that. And then converting your reports to use the, the focus uh, columns will also, you know, make it much more integrated in your in your systems. And and when the vendors and the providers provide natively focus format data, it's going to be a much easier shift for you uh, to adopt that. So joining uh, joining focus referred to this a little bit ago. We it is not the easiest thing for, for you to uh, join the focus group. It's not like, hey, I'm really passionate about this. I'm, I'm gonna go join uh, the group. You do require your company, we do require your company to approve your contributions. And that is again, like I said, to ensure that this specification will remain free and open for the next 20 years for people to use. So uh, there is a little bit of uh, work there. Um, we can definitely help you. Linux Foundation runs Linux kernel, Kubernetes, among other things. So corporations and organizations are used to going through some of this process. We, just, we can help you find the right people in your organization, uh, walk you through the, the CLA process to get you signed up. Uh, just the, to make so, it clear that CLA might be a term you're not familiar with. Oh, it's a contributor license agreement. Contributor um, license. Okay. But, and then, so yeah, what the Unimas are saying is we, we lean on the Linux Foundation program for this. They have a JDF uh, joint development framework, which is a um, pretty common uh, framework for all of the Linux Foundation projects to use with your organization. So we're finding for the bigger organizations, they're already familiar with this uh, form to sign. As, and then the smaller organizations feel a lot more nimble to be able to uh, read and consume and sign. It's really just the ones in the middle where we have to work a little bit with, but we're well, willing to help everybody uh, through the process. Yeah, and then uh, from, from the 
focus groups, this is really the working group part of uh, focus, where, you know, as you saw, dimensions, metrics, attributes, all of that, that's part of what we define. There's also uh, work to define a FinOps uh, use case library, right? The common things that you all do in your organizations, we want to get those into a, a single place and then figure out how does focus help you do this, which dimensions, which metrics, and what's missing uh, so that we can incorporate that back into the, the, uh, the specification. We want people from all different backgrounds for this. Some of the finance folks, they have very important insights into what they want to get out of the data. Some of the engineering folks know what do our engineers want to see, in what ways do they want to see it, what granularity, what amount of recency for, for the data, et cetera, right? So it's not just for billing data geeks. If you're a billing data geek and you know the curve and the 350 columns, great, get involved. Like, we definitely need that. But there's all other roles that play in this Ultimately, FinOps is about bringing everybody together, so we want to bring the use cases. Just take the current schemas of the file formats and come up with another one. It doesn't really help solve FinOps, and so we're wanting to back from the actual use case in mind and figure out what dimensions you need in order to answer that question. So the use case library, I think, is critical for us to get success with. Yeah, and I already mentioned we're working on the 1.0 milestone and the definition of it, so it's early days to get involved in that effort. And so then the uh, open source program projects that we're going to stand up against things. So the, fo the focus project will actually own the spec and that will require you to see later get involved in. But the spec itself, we want to make it so that we're actually implementing solutions around the spec. And so we can do that within the FinOps Foundation um, itself, outside of the CLA. And we are really trying to focus on converting the data and validating the data as the two use cases that we need to stand up open source projects for. Um, and so. Uh, we have built a data validator as a proof of like a, a reference implementation. Um, this will help us um, cover up how to validate data and we'll cover that in a moment. Um, and then we are wanting to stand up the open source projects for converters uh, after, after FinOps X. And so for validation, we believe there's, there's two views, the uh, reasons why you need a validator. Um, so if you're generating cloud builds itself in focus spec, being able to actually validate that you're doing it right and also being able to show that your data is focus um, data for your consuming customers. So for the build generator, just making sure that you are generating something that meets the specification and especially in the early days, the specification is going to continue to evolve and, and grow really rapidly. And so by being able to use the validator as a way of identifying what you haven't yet caught up with as far as the spec goes. Yeah. Uh, oh, I... Well, it's the data you're receiving. You want to be, as a consumer, like a, as a receiver of the cloud billing data, whether it's a vendor tool, um, receiving data from a cloud provider or your customer, or as a practitioner, getting data to come in, being able to use the validator to check that the data that you've received is good before loading it in to your data lake, into your pool of data, and poisoning it with bad data. You can actually use this in pipeline to, to check, approve, and then merge afterwards. Uh, so once again, data uh, is not very visual. And so the validator itself uh, is a pile of rules, uh, which is the most important part. But what we've done is actually proved, done this as a proof of concept with uh, both a command line output, but also uh, in uh, GitHub Actions, being able to actually run on, on commit a GitHub Action that would run the test of all of the different uh, normative pros from the uh, specification document and then build, like pass or fail the build. And so as, as we go into moving out and building converters, we see the validator being in pipeline for the converter to test the actual conversion uh, is successful. So in terms of converting the, uh, the data, right, like the, we believe the rules are the key here. Uh, the specification is going to lay out a set of dimensions and metrics and all of that, but the rules, we want to be able to write this in a way that you all can implement it in whichever language and, and, and frameworks that you want. We're obviously going to come up with a reference implementation, but that's just one implementation for this. If you know what the rules are that are required for converting AWS data into the focus uh, specification in, in plain English, you can then go 
you write this implementation in, in whatever language you're comfortable with or, or your company uh, happens to use. So we're going to find this across all the open source uh, tools where uh, we'll give you a reference imp implementation where we expect some of the runners are going to write their own systems, whether they've got you know, something like great expectations or DBT, they're going to you know, want to basically put it into their existing pipelines versus having something bolted onto the side. And so the rules themselves is the translation from human English and normally prose of the text of the document into a more machine readable format. So we believe that we'll see uh, people picking up the, the uh, rules validations just to read those rules and not really to execute the code. It's important to remember the specification does not tell you how to do, you know, how to convert the data for any particular vendor. In fact, we're making, uh, we're going to great lengths to not mention the pro individual data sets and the providers in the specification. That just tells you what the data needs to look like. And this is the work of then being able to convert that, the, the actual data from the providers into uh, the focus specification. So, you know, which are, which are the ones that, that we're kicking off or right after X. We, we do want to get Google, Azure, Oracle Cloud, AWS, and IBM uh, as an initial set of reference implementations. Uh, we're looking for interest for many other uh, providers. We are looking to get into SaaS and, and all uh, other types of costs. So uh, please, if, if your organization is using uh, some of these vendors or, or providers or, or it's not even listed here, get in touch with us. We can get essentially uh, do some of the, the legwork of getting the, the projects organized uh, and then you can uh, you know, lead some of these things. You can build some community around it to, to build some of the, the, the converters. And if you are one of these vendors, we would love to talk to you as well. Yes, <laughs> please lean in and, and uh, while your native support is coming along, this is a great way to serve the customers. So. Yeah, back to my, my spiel about letting the, the, the providers know, uh, you know, they are definitely hearing it. Uh, <laughs> you wouldn't believe the number of people that came to the, the, the booth right after the, the talk saying, we're going to be uh, driving uh, our, our providers X, Y, and Z to be uh, all in on this. So uh, and many of them are, you saw in the, in, the, in, the, in the talk in the cloud panel, how much excitement there is about helping the practitioners and the organization, the customer organizations. Uh, but we want to make sure that they, you know, they continue to hear about this and it's going to continue to get prioritized on the, on the roadmaps. So I guess before we go to QA, just uh, check out the spec, focus on FinOps at all, go and read it, get a feel for what it is. CLA, ping me if you get stuck. But uh, yeah, the instructions, step-by-step -step instructions are also in the, uh, on, on our GitHub repo. And for everyone in our practitioner community, uh, keep up to date, chapter focus. Um, so between the Slack channel for the open conversations and then the focus.finops.org, we we'll want to keep everybody in sync of what's going on and, and when, when the next step is in this journey. So open it to the room. All right, so I just want to point out, uh, I'm very proud of all of you. <laughs> You are the first audience in FinOpsX history to break the Q&A model. There's no way I can run around hand you guys this mic. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, Mike and Udom, can you call people and then repeat the question? Yep. Well, thank you. Don't be shy. So we, that, that slide is what we wanna do as an open source community to convert data sets without waiting for the cloud providers. And, and even the ones that are saying they're interested in doing the conversions for their customers, we, we believe that an open source community can beat them in the meantime. And because if we stand around waiting for all of that to happen, we'll be talking to you in three years time about when it's all done. So we just want to unlock it, focus for everybody as soon as possible. Basically. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so the question is basically on the, the vendor um, slide for that conversions. The ones at the top, so all the clouds basically, we know that you need to convert that data to focus. We want to stand up projects for them uh, after X. 
we are interested to see how much interest there is from the community about other projects that we could stand up in convert, like, like making open source converters, reference implementations. Um, you know, we could put every vendor on a list and say we're going to start a project for all of them. But the reality is we can't do everything at once. If there's enough community support for you know, a group of practitioners to get together and actually drive that as a project, we'd love to support it. It's very similar to the Terraform model, um, if you guys are familiar with Terraform. Uh, sorry, was there one more? Otherwise, there's a question back here. Okay. Mainly talking about the AWS, right? The apps that they have here. And is there a way as a human rights community that we can deliver this message so it's a little bit stronger than me going my rent, bad fun as a rep? That it is the best way to. So basically, how do we get Amazon support? Is the best way is to go to your reps. They need to hear it directly from their customers because, you know, they're not going to listen to me is basically the answer. Like, I'm, I'm talking on behalf of all of you. They want to hear it from their customers. And, th and that is the way to, to go for My, my, there's a little bit of debate on this, we, even within the group right now, and, and we'd need, oh, sorry. Uh, the question was around how, how do we think about existing data from the, the, the providers and uh, incorporating the focus, is that? Um, my, my opinion here is that focus data by itself is not gonna be sufficient for uh, practitioners. Focus data serves a certain purpose for well-known FinOps use cases, but the value will be existing vendor-specific uh, data plus focus data. And so to be clear, that's not two different data sets. It's the spec being able to allow the vendor to extend it with vendor-specific dimensions. Exactly. So that it, it's, um, we, you can lean on these dimensions as always there and, and, and absolutely going to be filled in. But then there's going to be vendor specific dimensions that are giving the flexibility for the vendor to customize for them. Um, but that is definitely an open area for discussion that we need to figure out as a long term. Um, so to repeat the question, it sounded like you were talking about uh, how, how would tag-based data points be pulled into the data and then potentially other data sets like uh, performance data? Okay. I'll do my best to catch on that. So I think it's when you relate tag data to other data sources like CMDBs, how can that be enriched? Um, yeah, so I think we'll first tackle how we bring tag data, like tag dimension into the data set so it's consistent across the cloud providers, which wouldn't break the model of the external CMDB. You would still be able to get the, the key dimension that look, just does the lookup. But it's interesting to think about how you could bring the uh, CMDB data into the data lake in a way that joins naturally. Um, but definitely an area that we could explore. Join, join us up and love to expand it. There's definitely in the 1.0 scope as well. The customer business context, getting that into the, the spec, just we only had the 10 weeks, so we had to <laughs> have pretty tight scope on the 0 0.5. Other questions? So about a minute left, probably one more. Yeah. Uh, different units of measure being reflected in the data. So uh, I'm guessing like one uses gigabytes, the other terabytes, that sort of thing, or? So I think there'll be a usage metric just like we see today in the, in the cloud data. That usage metric would be a unit. There would need to be some sort of unit 
um, so you're able to go, you know, all gigabyte transferred uh, as cost line items, and then that unit makes sense. Other things might be, you know, compute hours, and that's it. It's okay. Yeah, I think we'll probably marry up the consistency, the, the, the model that we already see in the data sets today on that, but that's definitely not, that's just my opinion. Like, we need to get the community together on that one. Um, All right. So we're right on time, so, uh, you know, we will be on the boat. Come and grab us. We'll be out at the OG booth, so the um, framework booth, the front and pillar. Big right round of right applause, Mike and Udom. Thank you all. Thanks for watching that session. I'm sitting here in San Diego right after FinOpsX. We hope you join us next year here live 2024. In the meantime, please subscribe to the channel and join the community. Get involved. Join the summits. Get in a working group. And don't forget to get FinOps certified. It's next year here in San Diego for FinOpsX. It's going to be twice as big. Come join the party. Come meet your people. Welcome home.